Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Pass Television from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. My name is Don Reed Sr. Welcome to Crossing Pass, and we sure thank all the people who have been writing us letters supporting us. We appreciate any letters, any calls. We have people standing by at the end of the program, all doing the program, and you can call in and get prayer or whatever you want. And it's always good because I meet so many guests, and this guest is going to tell you how he happened to appear on my program or uh, how we crossed paths. Maybe somebody mentioned, I don't know. But it is exciting to see people getting saved, born again, according to John 3.3. 3, that's our scripture here. Always John 3.3. 3. Billy Graham taught that years ago, and I watched him, and uh, a lot of people planted. You know, and that's the nice part of today that uh, so many people don't realize that there's a lot of people involved in everybody's lives here today. That's why we call it Crossing Pass. Well, Joyce, we made a lot of people, right? We have met some wonderful people, Don. I'm so glad God just brought this thing all into being. So it's good to know. Good to know your neighbors. Good to know the people across the world, don't we? Amen. We do. Very good. Well, who's our guest today? Our guest today is Daniel Eaton. We can't forget that name. Mm -hmm. And for the few minutes that I've known this man, I have been touched. And so, Daniel, will you please share with our viewing audience what you were sharing with me? Yes, absolutely. God bless you. Well, my name is Daniel Eaton. Uh, I've, I was saved when I was 18 years old. And I remember telling my mother, I, once I was introduced to Jesus, I wasn't going to rest until I told all my friends <laughs> about Jesus. And I did. And I was still in high school then. I was a mm -hmm. senior. And I'm going to start there because all through high school, I was very against drugs. I was very anti-drug. And once I got out of high school, I started experimenting with some marijuana, alcohol. And I remember this day vividly when I was 21 years old. Some friends of mine came over to my apartment and they introduced me to cocaine. Oh. And that opened up a huge door in my life that I was not able to shut for many, many years, over a decade of, of drug abuse. And it got so bad towards the end, I was starting to see things, hear things, and, and I would be going to get my drugs and I would scream at myself to turn around. And it was like watching somebody else running my body. I was almost watching myself do these things and, and I hated what I was doing. And every night for many, many years, I would cry myself to sleep. And I would pray to God that he would set me free because I felt like a prisoner in my own body. You knew it was wrong then, right? Yes. Were yeah. you raised in a Christian family? How did, before 18, like you said, were you raised in a Christian family or? Yes, I was raised Catholic. I was, I went to a Catholic school. I was an altar boy and, and every, and all. So you knew the difference between right and wrong. A lot of people say they didn't know. Yes, you did. The Catholic church taught you that. Yes. 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 And, uh, like I said, it's when I, when I did that, I knew it was wrong. But I opened a door, and then after a certain point, I couldn't control it anymore. I was being controlled by a force, and, and it was like... Evil. Evil. Not pure evil. Pure, pure evil. evil. Pure, pure evil. Pure demonic. Because yes. drugs and alcohol and stuff is pure demonic, and it takes you over, and it really took me over. I would, I would see... I would have horrible nightmares for years and years and years. And it was like being watching a, a bad movie over and over and over, and I just couldn't escape from it. Well, in the middle of my drug abuse, I, I even prayed to God that he would show me hell to scare me straight. And, well, one night, one day, I should say, I was out drinking, and I was on my way to go get drugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife at that time called me, and we got into an argument over the phone. And of course, it wasn't her fault. It was my fault, the argument. Well, I actually got mad at God, and I actually cursed God, mm -hmm. and I felt him take his hand off me. I felt him leave. I didn't even realize he had his hand on me. But once he left, I felt this 
the best way I could describe it was liquid evil in the vehicle just surrounded me. And I was never so terrified in my life. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything, but it was pure evil. And I was just absolutely terrified, petrified, really. And right after that, he, uh, I hit a guy on a bicycle. Oh, my. And I didn't know if I killed the guy or what. But I've been drinking, and uh, I knew that the cops were going to be called. But I, I wasn't so scared about going to jail for, I didn't know, like I said, for manslaughter or whatever. I wasn't so scared about that. I was scared that God was going to leave me in that place. Mm. And I repented, and then I felt God put his hand back on me. I felt it. And to this day, I've never felt God's hand leave me. Do you think that was the day you committed, or was it later on in your testimony where you actually gave your life to the Lord? Oh, I gave my life to the Lord be before that at 18. At 18, okay. Yes. I, I, that's what I mentioned a while ago. See, so your Catholic background and everything is coming forward and protecting you. That's the Word of God. You know, we get in different churches, I don't care what denomination, that will come forward, you know, some plant and some water, and God gives the increase. Exactly. And after I gave my life to, to, I gave my life at 18, but, but at that time I was already, had left the Catholic church. I gave my life at a Baptist church. Mm -hmm. I was dating a girl and I, I was going to a Baptist church in Linesville, Pennsylvania. So, but um, going back to when, when God took his hand off me, but he put it back on mm -hmm. and the police came because I turned around to see if the guy was all right. He ended up being okay. But the cop interviewed me and stuff. I know he had to smell alcohol, but <laughs> he didn't say a word. It didn't ask me if I'd been drinking, and he had to smell it. So I believe that God sheltered me from him you had an charging an, You had an angel around you. Yes, exactly. Oh. Okay. So that, that happened. Well, then right after that, I, I, I left, and I continued to go on to where I was going to get my drugs, and I was screaming at myself to turn around. I was, but I was just being controlled by this evil force. Yes. It was controlling all my, everything that I was doing. And so I, I, I knew that my only chance to get out of there was God, that he was gonna have to set me free. Okay. And so I- uh, God and had bigger plans for you, didn't Yes, he? he did, yes he did. And. And during that time, I had, I had a dream about I was in front of like thousands and thousands of people, like a football stadium full of people preaching. And as I walked backstage after I was done preaching, there was Billy Graham to shake my hand. And I don't know what that meant, but this was a dream. And my whole journey has started from that dream. And I didn't know what exactly that was about, but I would... I would uh, now I'm trying to think. Okay, so as as uh, I journeyed on a little longer, I would get I would go places and I'd get words that God was going to set me free. He now was going to do. Were you quitting drinking now, or were you still monkeying with the drugs? Were you oh, I was I was still still doing the even, drugs, even though the dream. So how well, did, because I hadn't been set free yet. Yeah, okay. How did How did you get into a healing ministry then, in the midst of all this? Yeah. Uh, that comes later many, on, many go years ahead. later. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Andre. Many years later. Yeah. So as on, on Easter Sunday one morning, I went to church. I would make it to church sometimes when I could. And on Easter Sunday, I had a, a word of prophecy that the Lord sees me as a diamond in the rough, and he's grinding off the rough edges. Well, later that night on Easter Sunday, God delivered me supernaturally I, I, all the dreams were gone, all the, the voices were gone in my head, and, and, but I, I got delivered in my own bed at night. At night, all by yes, yourself? Yes, all by myself, just me and, me and Jesus. And you quit just like that? Yes, oh. and that was over 16 years ago. Wow. Instantly, instantly gone. Uh, that's the power of Jesus. That's the power of God, oh, love it. So, uh, but after that, I would go places and people would pull me out of crowds and prophesy over me. Sometimes I'd be places where people were preaching and they would stop preaching and they would pull me out. They would prophesy over me right in the middle of their sermon and stuff. 
while that God was, was wanting me to preach the gospel, and then he was saying he was going to teach me to heal, which I know it's not me healing, but it's, it's by your faith in Jesus Christ, he's the healer. But this, was, this here, like I said, was many years ago that I would get these prophecies, and they just kept coming and coming. Wherever I would go, the same thing over and over. And I knew it had to be God telling these people the same story. You know, Daniel, when you, our message here today from Ron, and we're going to stop you just for a minute. I want to go back to, like Joyce said, how you got into the healing ministry too, you know, because people can prophesy over people today, and, and some of the churches don't even know what I'm talking about because uh, they don't know the total word of God, I'm the power of God, uh, and uh, nothing against them, but uh, the power of God and, and the whole true born again experience. Yours was gradual after you first made a commitment at the age of 18. And there's some people out there, and like he said, God will never leave you or forsake you. He said, I don't need you. Now you can leave him, but he'll still chase after you. That's what, that's the kind of Lord I serve. You know, you serve. And Joyce has served, that's right? True. That's true. He'll so never true. give up to you. And we're going to go into the message today. I like what you're talking about this is, is Ron going to tell you, with God's perfect timing. See, he had a, everybody has a perfect timing in their lives. Now you can run, squirt, kick, <laughs> get away from God, but he don't give up. I'm so glad he didn't give up on me. Yes, me too. And now when we listen to this message of, from Ron with God's perfect timing, then we'll come back here and talk about his healing ministry. Hi, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to today's show. Today we're gonna to talk about a very important subject. It's God's perfect timing. Now listen, God is in control of all things. As a matter of fact, it says in, the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, that He, God, He causes all things to work together for the good. So listen, no matter who you are, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, God has a divine purpose for what you're going through. It's just not the good things that He causes to work together for the good. He said He causes all things to work together for the good. So you may be going through some difficult times right now. Maybe that's why you tuned in to the message. Because listen, there's hope within these pages of this Bible. So I encourage you to get to know your Bible because that is Jesus. Jesus truly is the Word. So I encourage you to get your Bible out with me today and turn to Matthew, the 26th chapter. We're going to begin reading at verse 6. And it says, When Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly perfume. This was a fragrance, uh, fragrant oil. And she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. Now listen, you may be just like the disciples at that day. They thought this woman was absolutely crazy because this was very, very costly perfume. And she just came and poured it on the head of Jesus. But one thing I want to encourage you, when you're talking about God's perfect timing, you may be in a window of your life where people may look around and think the things that you're doing. You may even have just accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe today you may accept him as your Lord and Savior. People may, may think you're absolutely out of your mind. I mean, they thought this woman, the disciples that were right there with Jesus, thought, what is this woman? What could she possibly be doing wasting all this perfume? So listen. One man's loss is another man's gain. This was her pearls. This was the greatest thing that she could have ever done. She just came and dumped it on the head of the Messiah. The, her, the people around her, sometimes your friends and family members, they kind of, people just distract you sometimes from the call of God and, and what God really has for you, that, that perfect, the perfect timing in, in your life that God wants to work with you. And it says this, but when the disciples saw it, they were upset saying, why this waste? So one person may be looking at it as waste, but Jesus looked at this as one of the greatest things that this woman could have ever done. And it says, <clears throat> Jesus said this, for this fragrant oil might have been sold, no, the disciples said this, for this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, why do you trouble the woman? Listen, today in your life, people may be coming to you and they may be, tr may be troubling you because God has a divine purpose for you. God has a reason for every single thing that you're going through. 
Sometimes God, I mean, there's some trials and tribulations that enter into your life. And sometimes that may be just for God to get your attention. But I'll promise you this, whatever it is, God causes all things together to work together for the good, for them that love him and who are called according to his purpose. So Jesus said this, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me, for you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it to prepare me for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the entire world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial for her. Listen, my friend, this woman was at a Kairos moment. She was at a crossing path. There was a time that she got to in her life where her paths crossed with Jesus. And she took, I mean, she grabbed that situation and did exactly what she was supposed to do. And listen, this is what I encourage you to do today. Like I said, there's no coincidence in the Bible. God does not even have a word for coincidence. For, so for tuning into this show today, it's a divine appointment between you and us at Crossing Paths today. Our paths have crossed. So I encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Be like this woman. Make the most of the situation. Turn it around. Turn the bad things in your life that the devil wants to cause for bad and, and turn them around for good. Listen, the ball's in your court today. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So thanks for listening, and let's get back to the show. Thank you, Ron. That's a message, God's perfect timing. Now, as many times, have you ever tried to maybe in your lifetime cure yourself or something like that? Oh, yes. Well, before I got delivered, I, I was so desperate. I, my heart was hurting one night because I was doing cocaine. I actually tried to overdose and kill myself. And I was so desperate, I, I, was, I, I didn't see any way out of this. But the more drugs I did, God just sobered me up. He wouldn't let me die. And I felt like such a failure, I didn't believe that I could even kill myself correct. I was like really distraught, but I didn't realize God had bigger plans for my life. You know, Daniel, that's, that's why we, we are so against this marijuana, which is like a little one drink to some people. You know, I know everybody can drink and have a few drinks. That's not their problem. I'm not talking about that. Yes. But marijuana is a, something that's just as this country had. Now, God has had on you. He said God perfect timing, right? Yes. Now, how did this ministry that you, he, he chose a ministry for you. Now, tell me about that healing. Okay. Well, one day I was, uh, actually I was up in Erie at a conference and God sent a prophet from six hours away to come to this meeting, and he didn't know why he was coming. But as I went to this meeting, I was pulled into the parking lot. I was supposed to be there at 9.30 in the morning to register for this conference. Mm -hmm. And I seen this, this lady that looked homeless. She was carrying crutches, and she was limping. And as I made my way over there, I realized... She was looking for a ride up the street to go to work at a Dollar General, she said. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw her limping, and I thought, wow, I get the, an opportunity to pray for this lady and tell her how much Jesus loves her. So I get her in the car, and I take her to where she needs to go, but she doesn't take me to the Dollar General. She takes me in the middle of this block to this plaza that's just getting built or remodeled. There's no stores in the place. And she says, drop me off here. This is good. She said, my store's around the corner. And I'm thinking, we're in the middle of the block. There is no corner. And she could barely walk. And I, again, I tell her Jesus loves her and stuff. So as I'm pulling away, I look in my rearview mirror, and she's gone. There was nowhere for her to go. She just disappeared. And I was like, what, what's going on? Uh -huh. Well, as I pulled back into the conference, this, this elderly lady meets me at the door, and she says, I saw what you did, and God told me to bless you. So she spoke the ironic blessing over me, and we're talking, and my mom was telling her about some, a lot of the miracles I've been seeing, because I've been praying for people and seeing lots of miracles happening. And she says, just a minute, I want to call over Prophet Elijah, this man from Allentown he came from. So he comes over and he starts telling me about this big crusade going around the country. And, and I'm like, wow, that sounds 
awesome. He's like, do you want to be a part of this? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, God sent me here to get you to be a part of this big crusade. Mm. And I said, well, of course I'll be a part of that. So later in talking to him, he pulled in that parking lot and say that, saw that same woman cross, crossing the parking lot. And he's, he, they usually help people like that. He said, the Lord locked them in the vehicle and said, no, I'm sending somebody. And the person that takes her where she needs to go, that's the one you lift up into full-time ministry. And that's the one you anoint as a prophet. That was the woman? That, and, and I asked him, I said later, I asked him, I said, let me ask you, was that an angel, uh -huh. that lady? And he said, well, you know, I've never thought about that. And he said, as soon as I said that, he heard the Lord saying, confirm, confirm. And he just said, yes. And you yes. never saw her ever after that? No. She just, <laughs> she just wow. disappeared. It, it was incredible. Well, we talk about angels. God's perfect timing. We could talk about angels all around us sometime. Yeah. That, yes. uh, only we have enough confidence. I have one. The Lord needs a dozen around me, but I, he just, <laughs> uh, maybe two dozen around my friend, more Ron Kosor. But uh, we know that God is working his perfect timing today. You're here today. How did we cross paths, you and I? Um, well, I, I, I knew about you from uh, some people that I've, I've known from Full Gospel, and I actually came over to your, your dinners over there in Hubbard, Ohio, and stuff, and people have been telling me for a long time that I ought to get a hold of you and tell my story and my testimony, but the Lord was always like putting this, this check in the stoplight saying no, 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 you know, so I never pursued it. But one morning here before Christmas uh, this past year, I got up and the Lord said to call you. So I called you and nobody answered. <laughs> so next thing I know, about 15 oh, minutes no. later, you call me. You were in California visiting your daughter. And you said right away, you said, I never call anybody back when I'm on vacation. He said, but as soon as I saw your number, the Lord said, you need to call this guy. Yeah. There, and God's perfect timing. There, there you go. You know, you've seen our program before, right? Yes. You know, that, that's the nice part. You just said something about uh, our banquets. We used to, uh, we ministered to over 10,000 people mm -hmm. on our banquets. One banquet alone, 600, 300, 500, okay? We've had James Irwin speak on there. I've had all kind of uh, uh, Lester Sumrall come all the way down one time. Flew his jet into uh, Youngstown, Ohio. Never knew me and nothing. Uh, I was a ministry two, two months old, three months old. Six months <laughs> later, Lester Sumrall called me and said, I'm going to bring my jet down. And flew his jet into Youngstown, Ohio. Gave a, a testimony on a Friday night and a Saturday took off. And all we could afford him was pay him $300. And he had two, two pilots with him. <laughs> so that's what God's perfect timing is today. You're here. And, and, and I'm going to have you pray in a minute. Take a minute here. I want you to pray into that. Uh, 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 camera there, and and uh, there's somebody out there that you can take a minute, please, and 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 and, and Daniel, that's what we need to do. Pray for one another, would you? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. I love to pray for people. That's my job. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the audience and people that are watching this program, and, and Lord, I just know in your word you said there's no distance in the spirit realm. So right now, Father, I take the blood of Jesus. I erase all infirmity and in people's bodies. I command wholeness and healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. All pain, you will leave their bodies now. You will be made whole and healed in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Father, and I declare and decree it is so. It is finished in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Lord. you've been listening to, anyways... Daniel Eaton, you know, you're available to speak anywhere if anybody would ask you to come for healing or whatever, right? Definitely. All right, Definitely. and you don't charge $25,000 or something like that, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> but he'll take it if they are. <laughs> <laughs> so I can well, give it to the kingdom. Well, right, well, you know, amen. That's, that's why Crossing Pass is so good. Just ordinary people that given their testimonies, you know, that I don't know where people come. Joyce, uh, one time somebody called you and said, what, where do we get the speakers or something? We said, God sends them. Really? Yeah. How do we get them? We just meet them. 
And we the, don't go out and hunt for them, but they're there. Yeah, there's like Lester Sumrall and people like that. I mean, it's not, we, our speakers aren't just nationally known. They're local people mm -hmm. sharing with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to ask you out there today, when's the last time, maybe it's the first time today, you ever told somebody about Jesus? Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you think about that. When I got saved, believe me, pe people, I was uh, a, a world's worst. Uh, Paul had nothing. I would always say, move over, Paul, but... You know what happened? God saved my soul. His perfect timing was for me years ago, 46 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Thank Christ, you Romans 1, 16. Yes. You know, I am not ashamed. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So I'm praying for my house, my family, your family, so forth. We all are. And every guest we get on here, we don't believe in abortion is murder, simple as that. I don't believe in pro-choice where you can choose or not to choose. We're pro-life. Mm -hmm. I make no doubt about it. And God has blessed me. And today, I was so far in debt today, I'm out of debt because God saved me 46 years ago. Are you ashamed of the gospel? Say, Lord, like he said, come into my life right now. Make him, no long prayer, just ask him to come in. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. And when you say he's a sinner, he's right there to greet you. The Holy Spirit is. And once you call that telephone number, too, right on the screen, 724-981-7777. We have people standing by. We have a Bible. We'll send you a Bible free. Our ministry has given over 40,000 Bibles away free. So don't forget, call that telephone number. Get rid of your pride and tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm in my backyard here, and people have been asking me about Crossing Pass books, and we found a couple of these in our inventory, Crossing Pass Treasure, uh, Volume 1, and it is various people in their lives that appeared on our television program, and some of them are very interesting. They're all interesting, but I want to tell you some of them, if you would like to get this book, okay? Uh, we have a Jewish lady that was converted, okay? We have a, uh, a, a pastor from the Nazarene Church who got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and he's in here too, and we have... Uh, my wife is a uh, Joyce here. Is a, a story of her life is in here, and my particular short story of life is my in, in here too. So, if you'd like to help us out with this ministry, we sure would appreciate it. We have Ben Kintro's life in there. There's so many good stories. These stories are all about their individual lives and telling them about their lives. So, for fifteen dollars, you could send us or anything additional top that would help us to keep us on the air. God bless you and thank you.